Today, I wanted to talk about modding Risk of Rain 2. I recently made a mod for the game, and I know that modding is something that people want to get into, but it's kind of hard to get into this so they don't know where to start. So let's make one. Before we get into this, I want to make sure that I point you guys to a couple resources in case I miss anything, that being the wiki and the discord. Links to those are down in the description as well. To get started, we're actually going to use one of those resources right now, that being Rob's example survivor template. You can get a link to the file which includes the Unity project as well as the Visual Studio project down in the description below, or you can join the discord community and type exclamation mark getting started character in the discord but don't do that just use the link in the description otherwise you're going to spam the chat and it's just going to be once you download the survivor template you're going to need the right version Once you download the template, you're going to need the right version of Unity to open it with. Keep in mind that if you install the Unity Hub, you're going to have to add it manually after you download the old version. In any case, go to the Unity Download Archive, a link to that is in the description as well, and download this specific version of Unity. Once you're done downloading Unity, open up the project. Now we're starting with the template right now because I prefer to get the character in visually before the functionality is done, meaning that you can see the character before the moves are done, but you can totally do the reverse as well. That means that the first thing we're going to do is talk about how to make an asset bundle. Now an asset bundle is just a way of bundling bundling assets together into a file that can be read inside of Visual Studio. This means that all your models, textures, and particles have to be a part of this file if you want them to show up in your mod. Now usually to create an asset bundle you need to write this Unity Utility Script thingy that takes all assets grouped together with a tag and then throws them into the bundle, but keep in mind that that does have a 98.23% chance of breaking for absolutely no reason. Now what I heavily recommend you do instead is just take all of your assets and put them into this example survivor template project and then use the stuff that's already in here to make your asset bundles it has the Unity utility script that you need, as well as this convenient plugin that actually lets you navigate around and see all the stuff that's in your bundle. Now to make an asset bundle, you're going to need actual assets. This is why League of Legends survivors are so common. The assets are available and easy to implement inside of Risk of Rain 2, plus the visual style kind of matches the game. There's easy implementation, they even have a similar number of abilities, it, it all kind of just works. Anyway, if you want to know how to rip your art assets out of your League of Legends install, then follow this video here. I didn't make it, but it's a pretty comprehensive guide and it should show you everything you need to do, it's pretty easy. Now, if you're making a completely custom character, this is where most of your time is going to be spent. Making art is hard, and it takes a lot of time. And I'm not a 3D modeler, I'm just a programmer and a game developer. Now if you guys do want a tutorial on how to create your own custom character model, rig, animations, whatever, I don't know how to do it, but I can maybe convince Brett to give you guys a tutorial, so let me know down in the comments if you want to see it and I'll let him know. Regardless of how you get it done, at this point you should have a model with some textures and animations and be ready to make an asset bundle. To import your model into Unity, just open up a window of File Explorer and a window of Unity and then drag the file into Unity. It's super, super simple. Just make sure it's a correct file type. The one I use is FBX. FBX is pretty universal for most engines. If you're gonna be making models in the future, just make sure they're FBX. Now, if you have a different file type for your model, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Just get a 3D modeling application like Blender or Maya, import your asset in, and then re-export it as an FBX. After you import the model, import all your pictures for the character portrait, as well as the icons, whatever you need pictures for, you can import them, PNGs work just fine. Now that all your art assets are in the engine except for particles, which we can go into later, usually you'd have to go through and tag all of them with the specific asset bundle tag so that they got put into the same asset bundle with everything. But as long as all of those assets are within a folder that is tagged for the asset bundle, everything within the folder will get added, so you don't need to worry about it. The last step for this is to actually make your character a prefab. To do this, drag your model into the level and then drag it back out into the asset browser. This will save your object as a prefab and more importantly make it an interactive game object rather than just a model. Now that you have your prefab, you can give it an animator component and then drag all your animations into it. I'll go over how to make the animations functional in a bit, but for now we just want to get the character into the game. The prefab will save all of the data that's in this animator component, including the data of the actual animation. So all we need to do later is change some of the values that these animations reference and it just works. So now we can go into this tab, click the AP Make button, and watch the magic happen. Now that our asset bundle is finally done, we can make the stuff we put in Unity appear in the game. But first, we're going to need some code. Now this part's where it's up to you. You can either use Rob's base template C Sharp class and work off of that as a base, or you can make your own C Sharp blank project. It's what I did for the ribbon mod, but it doesn't matter in the slightest. You can do what you want. Before we actually get started coding our character though, we're going to have to set up a couple things inside of Visual Studio. The first thing we have to do is add this little bit of code at the top. Make sure that you substitute the names of your own mod in the applicable spaces, like after the namespace and bepin plugin lines. Here's mine for reference. Next, we need to add some references to the Visual Studio project. Make sure that you've installed bepinx and have run the game with it at least once. 
We'll start off by adding references to the Bepinex plugin that you have installed. So wherever that is, you're going to need to navigate to it. Typically, it's this location. Go through each of the folders in your Bepinex installation. In every folder, select every item and click Add. Once you've got all that, go to the Risk of Rain 2 data folder and then add all of the classes from the Manage folder that you need for your mod. You'll learn more about what specific ones you may need as you get further into making your mod. For starters, select Unity Engine, Unity Engine.Networking, Unity Engine.Core Module, and Assembly C Sharp, and add those to Visual Studio. Finally, click OK to apply your references. This may take a little bit, so be patient. Now that we've added all the necessary references, we're going to have to add two more using lines before the namespace we created earlier, that being using Bepinex and using Roar2. This allows our code to pull other code from other places on the computer, in this case it's Bepinex and Risk of Rain 2. This is where a decompiler can become very helpful, because it's crucial to understand what you have to work with in this code we've just referenced. From my experience, it doesn't really matter what decompiler you use. I use .peak and haven't had any issues, although it is recommended to use dnspy. All that we're going to be using the decompiler for while making this mod is opening up other .dll files to help us understand what we're doing here. All that matters is that with our decompiler we can open up this assembly C sharp file and get acquainted with all of the functions and stuff we have available to us. A really good place to start figuring out what you actually need to know from this huge library of functions is to open up other mods from the community and see the general size and scope of their code, as well as what from this library they actually use. A really important thing to remember is that we are just looking at this code to get an idea for how we should be structuring our code and what functions we should be using. Don't go copy-pasting other people's work unless you specifically credit them in a code comment or something. Really quickly before we finally get started coding, here I have to mention hooks. They're basically things that allow you to execute a piece of code when something that already happens in Risk of Rain happens. Let's say you wanted to do something every time you teleport to the next zone, you could hook onto that bit of code and do something else at the same time. There's a link in the description to the wiki which tells you how to use them, but I'm not going to go through them in this video because there's already enough information to process, and they're not necessary to make a character mod. So now we are at last ready to start coding. As I said at the beginning of the video, you can start coding however you feel makes sense. I prefer to get my character visually in the game first, so let's start with that. What we'll need to do is create another class called Assets, which will handle loading our asset bundle from earlier, as well as adding all of this stuff in it into the code as a bunch of variables. Really quick, we have to actually copy the asset bundle from earlier into Visual Studio, and to do that, all we have to do is open the file location of it, open the Visual Studio project in File Explorer, and then copy the paste the bundle into this folder. It should then show up in Visual Studio, at which point we need to switch it to be an embedded resource. Going back to the code, we can set up a bunch of variables at the top of this assets class here, one variable for each asset in our bundle. If you have more assets than I do, like more particles or something, then make sure you create variables for them here. We also need to add an asset bundle resources provider variable and an asset bundle variable here, which we'll use later to give R2 API all the stuff it needs to make our assets appear in game. Once you're done declaring all the variables you need up here, add a new function called populate assets. At the top of this function here, we'll add an if statement to check if our asset bundle is properly loaded, and if it hasn't, to then load it. You'll need to change these strings to be the same name as your namespace, in my case it's just Riven. Just below this if statement, we'll need to actually give the variables we declared earlier some values. So we'll use this main asset bundle .load asset function and set our variables to the output of that function. The strings here also change depending on what names you gave your assets in Unity, so just copy the names of the assets from Unity into these strings. You don't have to worry about including the folder structure as well in the string, it'll find it even if it's in a folder just fine. That's actually all we need for our assets class, so all we need to do is call this function somewhere else in the code, and our assets should load just fine. Now don't jump into the game just yet, because the assets just being loaded doesn't make them appear. That's what we'll handle doing here next. Up in our previous class's awake function, we'll add this line of code to actually call that function we just created. Now we can write some new code to take all of those assets and make them appear in the game. We're actually going to need three new functions to call here in the awake function, so let's go ahead and add those. The first one that we'll need is the create prefab function, and I want to quickly say that I do believe there's probably a way to write this that isn't so ridiculously large, but in here you essentially want to go through and add values to all the variables that define how the character moves around in the game space. If you want to have some source code for this to look at, I again recommend going through Rob's example survivor template in the description, because the create prefab function in that source code is a pretty good starting point for figuring out how much and what stuff you actually need in here. Now there are a couple of lines of code that I have in my function that will likely be different than what what you guys will end up having because my character probably works differently than what you guys are making. For instance, I have some stuff at the end which handles creating my state machine, which I'll be going into later, and my passive handler, which I won't be going into later because it's something specific for my mod. The next function we'll need is a register function. Mine's called register riven, but you can call it whatever you like. Remember that we are calling all of these in the awake function from before. To start off this function, we add some value to the character display game object variable we declared earlier on. We'll use this instantiate clone function to create a model for our character, and then add some necessary components onto it. Next, we'll add a bit of description for our character. This is actually what you see in game, so make sure it says what you want it to display. I'm going to add a couple of lines here so it looks nice. These new line calls space out the text. Next, we're going to add a couple of lines for the language API. 
Now, Risk of Rain 2 holds string values and tokens, so this Riven name string is not arbitrary. We'll go through and add value to these tokens later on. Next, we'll add a definition for a new survivor. Risk of Rain 2 has a function to create survivors based on a definition or a template, so we'll create a definition here, and then below this, add in a survivor based on this definition. I'll also call another function here called Skill Setup, which we'll create later on, and then finally add in this bit of code that makes our character actually selectable in the overall survivor list in the pregame menu. See, the way Risk of Rain 2 survivors work is that all of them are stored in a list, and the properties within the list are pulled and then displayed on the menu. Moving on, we'll go to the Create Doppelganger function. Now, this isn't entirely necessary for your mod, so you can skip it if you'd like, because all this does is make the Artifact of Vengeance functional, so if you're not playing with it, it doesn't really matter. This function is going to look pretty similar to the last one, but a bit shorter. Now, you're able to create your own AI for your doppelganger if you'd like, but personally, I don't really care that much, so all this code does is spawn on a doppelganger for the commando and then switch out the model that you see. Now that we've got all of those functions written and called inside of this awake function, there's one more that we'll need to add some functionality to our character. We'll need a register states function that only has four lines of code. All it does is ask our loaded API to add certain skill types to our list of skills that our character will use. Now to create those skills, we'll need to create a separate class that inherits from the base skill state class, which is part of the Risk of Rain library of classes. Now the code in here is entirely up to what you want your ability to do, so it can't really help you with this. I can, however, point you to some functions that you should use or learn to use within this class that will be helpful to use. The first is that inherently these skill state classes have on enter and on exit functions, which are called when the skill is used or is finished being used. The second is something inherent to Unity called an I enumerator or coroutine. Essentially, these are functions that can run separately from another and that can continue to run for a specified amount of time, which is really useful if you want your move to, let's say, have a startup animation to it before the hitbox comes out. To end off the coding section, I'd like to go back and quickly talk about the skill setup function from earlier. This skill setup function is going to be a void, and we'll call all of the setup functions from the various abilities that we will need, which will correspond to how many skills we have. I'll only go through one of these functions because they're all nearly identical, but here's the general framework of one. Essentially, we have to get a reference to our character's skill locator component, which we will store in a variable called the component. We can then go ahead and create a skill def, which will hold all of the various properties of our skill, like how many charges it has, whether or not it can be used while sprinting, and so on. We'll need to add some tokens to our language API here that appear when you hover over the ability in the game, and then add a bunch of values to our ability. Now this part is again up to you, you can do whatever you want with your move, but this is what I have for my left click attack and my Riven class. At the bottom here, we'll need to add our new ability to the loadout API, which is handled by this bit of code. Something to note is this line here. Make sure that you change your component primary line to whatever this ability this is for, be it primary, secondary, or so on. Finally, after all this code, we can build our mod. We'll use the build tab at the top here, and then hit build solution. Once we wait for the build to complete, we can see if it was successful or not in the output window here at the bottom, and if it was, we can go ahead and find its file location, copy it, and then paste it into our own BepinX folder like you would any other mod off the store. All there is left to do is run the game and pray that your code works. So that brings us to the end of the coding section. If there's anything I missed that you need an answer to, let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can answer your questions. All that's left to do now is to add some sounds into our mod. For this, we'll need to use the software WISE, which is a piece of middleware tech that games from Risk of Rain to Borderlands use to manage sound in their games. We won't be using this software to its full potential today. All we'll be doing is the bare minimum to get our sounds into the game. If you're at all interested in sound or sound engineering, I highly recommend you play around with the software, it can be a lot of fun. There is also a wiki page for this that you can follow if you'd prefer, a link to that is in the description as well. Like with Unity, we're going to need a specific build of WISE to work with Risk of Rain. You can find it pretty easily by downloading the WISE launcher and installing a new version while looking through the All Versions tab here. Once you've finished installing and have launched the software, you may run into a bunch of errors about Stadia, but you can skip right past them just like you probably skip past the console itself. Next. Click Accept to open up your project. Making our audio work is actually super simple. All we need to do is click the Project button up here and then hit Import Audio Files. Select our file and then hit Import. After that, we're going to change our layout to Soundbank. At the bottom left, there will be an Event Viewer. Here, we'll just right-click and then create a new Play Event. The name doesn't matter, all that matters is that we add the audio clip we imported to this event. There are cool things you can do with these events that I did in my mod. For instance, you can make these events choose from a random sound each time they fire, but for now, just adding the sound to this event is good. All we have to do now is drag our event into our Soundbank Editor window, and then hit this Generate Selected button. This will produce a soundbank.bnk file, which we can then add to our Visual Studio project like we did the Asset Bundle. It's important to change this in Visual Studio to be an embedded resource, which will make the Soundbank actually save within your DLL file. Next, we'll add these lines of code to initialize our sound bank inside of our awake function. And then, whenever we want a sound to fire, we'll add an ak soundengine.postevent function. 
The numbers at the beginning here correspond to the actual ID of the event in the sound bank file, so make sure that you have it open in Notepad as well as to copy the numbers over. The second argument in this function doesn't really matter, it just asks for the owner of the function. You can put a reference to your own character by default like this and it should work just fine. All that's left to do now is to build our mod like before, and here your sounds happen in the game. All that's left to do with your amazingly unique awesome mod is to publish it to the Thunderstore for everybody to see. It's a pretty easy process, all that you need are these lines of code that we should have from our project earlier. Once you have your finished DLL, you're going to need a couple other things inside of a folder. First off, copy and paste your DLL in here, and then find a thumbnail picture. You'll also need a readme file that appears here on the store. I recommend putting your changelog into it because there's bound to be issues when other people try to download and play your mod that you're going to have to fix and keep track of. The last thing you'll need is this manifest.json file, which will have to look pretty much identical to mine. Fill out these fields accordingly and then save your file. Once all of that is done, add all of these files together in a zip file. Finally, upload that to the Thunderstore and you're done. Well, probably not. You're probably going to have to patch it and update it a couple of times, but now you have all the tools you need to make a good mod in Risk of Rain 2. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Comment down below if you have any questions for me about the mod. I'll be happy to answer your questions.